can infrared detection replace the radar? This video is a sort of a follow-up on the video about the infrared stealth. We have seen how to reduce the infrared signature of a fighter and now we cover how to detect the plane using the infrared emissions. As usual, the things that we are going to discuss in this video are not easily found anywhere else on YouTube. We have already talked about the infrared search and track. It is becoming a sensor of ever-increasing importance in the air-to-air -air combat arena. In other videos we have discussed the specific technology and there, we, there would be much more to say. But now we want to understand if and how the AIRST could be used in real-life situations to replace the radar as the main sensor. So why would replacing the radar would be important? Well, because infrared detection can be totally passive. No radiation is emitted by the plane with the purpose of identifying the target, and since every radiation emitted can, in principle, be detected, the infrared is a very discreet way of detecting a target. Actually, detecting before being detected may be a matter of life and death. The infrared search and track is an optical apparatus that uses a combination of lenses and sensors to create an image from the infrared radiation. Modern ESTs often use different wavelengths because the atmosphere and the meteorologic phenomena do absorb the infrared radiation differently at different wavelengths. Long infrared wavelengths are less absorbed by the atmosphere, so they allow for detection at longer ranges. But the image that they produce is less sharp than medium infrared, which in turn is absorbed more, shortening the range. There are no free lunches. The image produced by the airs can be used by the pilot as such as a video feed on one of the screens in the cockpit. But what differentiates the airst from the flare is the ability to turn the image into a track on a screen or the head-up display. That is, one of the outputs of the airst computer to the computer managing the cockpit presentation is the angular position of a potential target in respect to the plane and, may, and any other information that can be extracted from the infrared track. Actually, the angular resolution of the earth can be very high because often the target is seen like a brilliant point-like image against the background. So how is this done? Well, the earth has scanning modes similar to the radar and it explores the frontal hemisphere. Track detection itself is based on image recognition algorithms and the detail, as you can imagine, are not easily available in the public domain. However, there is an underlying principle that is used to analyze the images, the contrast. Contrast is the difference in temperature between the target and the background. The higher the difference, the higher is the contrast. A plane seen flying against a clear sky or the sea is generally hotter and it appears brilliant against a dark background. Vice versa, a plane may be cooler than the ground and may appear dark against a brilliant background. So in some cases, the contrast may not be high at all. For example, this is the case if there are clouds in the background. A plane seen flying from above against the terrain may actually have a very low contrast and be difficult to spot. And these are the cases where more sophisticated image processing algorithms, often based to their relative motion, can be very effective. Now, coming back to the original question, can such a sensor replace the radar? 
Well, yes, up to a point, but to really do that, there are some big issues that need addressing. The range of an Erst cannot be expressed as a number. The detection range can be hundreds of kilometers in a clear night and with a hot target, emitting a lot of energy, or it can be reduced to a few kilometers or even less in bad weather and heavy cloud cover. To give an order of magnitude, the pirate Erst mounted on the Eurofighter Typhoon has a detection range of a fighter-sized target from the rear aspect of about 15 nautical miles in ideal conditions, which is reduced to 35 nautical miles from the frontal aspect. The ears installed on the Rafale and the Gripen, which are considered today by many the most advanced available on the market, are credited with slightly longer ranges, while the Russian systems are generally believed to have a shorter range, but not by much. And now, the corner of the F-35 fanboy! Yes, I know that an F-35 has detected the plume of a ballistic missile from 400 miles with its own apparatus. Sorry, that is not particularly outstanding. The infrared signature or even a short-range ballistic missile is more monumental. I am pretty sure that any other is in the market would have done the same. And the experiment was not to test the ETHs anyway, it was to test the information chain between the Air Force and the Army. How this became, the F-35 can detect and shut down ICBMs in flight? I don't know. Going back to more serious things, the operating range of a modern EST is not short and it is close to the radar ranges of the less powerful air combat radars. However, radars are much less sensitive to the weather and environmental conditions than any infrared sensor. Also, while the angular resolution of an Erst is normally good enough for calculating a fire solution, these ranges barely exceed the practical ranges of modern air-to-air -air missiles and they are definitely not enough to engage targets at the maximum of kinematic capabilities of modern weapons. However, always keep in mind that the actual detection range depends from the specific circumstances and can be very long or very short. So, giving for granted a sufficient detection range, the most attentive among you may have noticed that I did not speak about the range of resolution of an Erst, but only about the angular resolution. The reason being, the Erst is not giving you the actual distance from the target. The distance information is not available with an infrared sensor. The radar measures the time delay from the emitted pulse and the received echo. The Erst cannot do that. It is a completely passive sensor. It is not emitting anything. So if the actual distance cannot be extracted from the infrared image, we need to do something else. A laser range finder is a sensor that determines the distance by emitting a laser pulse toward the target and measuring the delay between the emitted and the received impulse, like the radar. They are very common in Earth even because they are quick, precise, light and compact. In theory, an Erst complemented by a laser range finder can replace a radar in its fundamental function of generating reliable and workable tracks. The first obvious drawback is that it is no longer a passive methodology and an aircraft with laser warding receivers can be alerted. And depending on the frequency and atmospheric conditions, the laser may become visible on the opponent's Erst. Lasers also are affected by the weather conditions and while in ideal clear conditions can have the very long ranges, in practice they are often limited to about 10 to 15 nautical miles. Triangulation is a mathematical methodology based on trigonometry. If the data of the two Earths 
separated by some distance, are available in the same point with the use of some basic trigonometry, the target distance can be calculated. It is conceptually very simple as schoolboy exercise, but also very complicated in practice. To be executed, it requires two planes flying in a loose formation, with a good separation, each one with an erst, exchanging the erst data over a data link. The onboard computers can then calculate the triangulation. If the target and the two fighters were static, it would be easy, but the calculation is made complex by the fact that all three corners of the triangle are moving at high speed. The bore side data need to be available against a shared reference direction with high accuracy, and the position of the two sensors needs to be known with precision and timely exchange between the two platforms. Moreover, the two sensors need to be sure of measuring the same target, something not trivial if there are many targets in the same area and the separation between the two ships is high. Finally, both need to have a clear visual of the target. For this reason, the measurement is not instantaneous and it may take quite a few seconds while the sensors, the computers, reconstruct each other's motion and estimate the target relative motion as well. However, when it works, it works extremely well. This kind of feature has been available on Gripen and Rafale since the beginning, while the United States Air Force and the, the Navy, that have been a bit dismissive of this technology, are quickly regaining the time lost. The F-35 EOTS has this capability through the directional data link. The new F-18 Block 3 is being fitted with the AMASG-34 Erst, and the, the Air Force is adopting the Legion pod. The Lockheed Martin AN-ASG-34 works in the far infrared and it is actually the same unit mounted on the Legion pod. The same Legion pod has the particular feature of automatic pod-to-pod -pod communication, thus providing to the current plane a tactical picture derived from more than one Earth. The same feature is available on the F-18 through the new data link, where the Erst is mounted on the nose of the centerline fuel tank. A Navy pilot who tested the feature declared that it is eye-watering. I let you interpret that. Finally, there is an intrinsic weakness in this technique. You need two planes rather than one, and in life you may not always have a friend nearby. As far as I know, no aircraft has two Ersts may be mounted toward the wingtips that could use their separation to triangulate. I suspect that all considered this separation would be too short to be effective, but it would be interesting to know if anything like this has ever been considered. When you have one single sensor and you don't want to use a laser, there is still an option available, kinematic ranging. Kinematic ranging is a methodology that was made popular by submarine warfare. The main idea is relatively straightforward. Assuming that the target have a constant flight path, if sensor and target do not fly directly at each other or in the same direction, there will be bearing changes over time. So the sensor platform can perform certain maneuvers and collect various bearing information. By correlating every bearing measurement over time with known speed of the sensor platform, then the distance to the target can be estimated. Uh, the accuracy of such estimation depends on bearing change value, which varies depending on aircraft speed or measurement time. So kinematic ranging is arguably the most stealthy ranging method of all as it does not require transmission toward target direction or communication with other aircraft. However, it offers a much lower accuracy and significantly longer measurement time compared to other methodologies. Moreover, as kinematic ranging relies on bearing change measurement, the accuracy heavily depends on the target keeping a straight flight path and a relatively constant speed. 
Thus, it is often only shooting four stealth planes since they are less likely to alert targets. So if you found this video interesting, there is a ton of videos on the same subject on uh, the channel and I'm sure you will be interested by the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, thank you very very much for watching, see you the next time.